I now like to Noga Levy, Rappaport, to continue the case in the proposition. But before I do, may I remind you that filming and photography are strictly prohibited in the chamber. You'll just have to subscribe to our YouTube channel instead. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, it's funny, the other side seem to level this accusation at us that we exist in society and yet we question it. It's a shocking concept somehow. It's almost as if this is a debate between those who can critically engage and those who can't, regardless. <laughs> I'll begin. We debate the possibility of ethical consumption under capitalism because the climate emergency requires ethics, right? On this, there can be no argument. The scale of ecological disaster we are facing and the window of time that is narrowing at such a rapidly terrifying speed requires only the smartest, sharpest, crucially ethical choices. Choices that mitigate, adapt, protect, and insulate us from the worst of the climate catastrophes that are already locked in. And in this landscape, wreaked with ecological havoc, we're told we have to make these conscious choices. To be the model conscious consumer, this perfect activist, or this hyper-aware bystander in the face of impending environmental doom. And capitalism reduces our ethics in this way. It reduces our choices, our morality, to a deeply individualistic level, Fending for survival by comparing minuscule vegan carbon footprints or how few children we're willing to bear or how many metal straws we'll buy. All whilst the political class in its civility to the corporate fossil fuel elite maintains a relentless drive for resource and wealth extraction on a scale unimaginable to the regular singular consumer. The economic forces that drive this eternal, unchecked greed for an ever-expanding economy of inequality pressure us into eco-paralysis, into devastating eco-anxiety where we tell ourselves we can consume ethically because we must. But in the cruel game of capitalism versus climate action, there is no such thing. The climate crisis is baked into the very foundation of states themselves, of capitalism as an economic and social system of extractivism, exploitation and destruction in the name of perpetual wealth. Resources required for state building under capitalism are accumulated intensively through extractivist, exploitative methods, ransacking the environment to the extent that environmental degradation itself becomes exportable. Capitalism by nature requires growth to survive, creating direct and indirect environmental harm as nature is commodified and broken down while constant incentives are generated for further ecological damage. Colonizers and imperialists ravage land and lives in the name of additional labor and resources with which to build newer lands, with which to further inequality, to maintain the stronghold of slavery and of fundamentally unethical ownership. These processes are entrenched in the capitalist system. These mindsets of steel, gain, weaponize at every possible human and environmental cost are embedded in capitalism itself. They built this system. And everywhere we turn, the heinous duo of capital and unethical policy and choices appear. Look at economic subsidies for fossil fuels of, in the tens of billions of pounds in the UK alone, or the oligarchy of our big six energy companies, or cast your gaze further to corporations claiming to reduce fossil fuel dependency, still building profit off of the same dirty capitalist model of overproduction, overextraction, and overconsumption. The mass mining of lithium and other minerals under the deceitful banner of green capitalism accounts for almost half of all resource extraction caused emissions already responsible for the world's majority. And as capitalism strengthens its hold on us in its domination of extraction, of contamination and depletion, in its active degradation of our ecosystems, that process intentionally strengthens its scapegoating of individuals for its own self-preservation as a system. Capitalism is growth for growth's sake. It leaves only violence and planetary carnage behind it. And consumption is how we prop all that up. No, thank you. Every choice we make in a system that entraps us is an act of engaging with that commodification of people and planet. Consumption is a rigged game. The only outcome is economic growth in exchange for social welfare, ecological liberation, and the equitable, sustainable futures that I'm sure everyone in this audience who is my age is dreaming of. And if we're stuck in that game, doomed to fail as long as capitalism enfolds us, forcing us to consume, then does that not too speak volumes about the unethical nature of the decisions we make in such an exploitative economic system? If your choices of consumption are to survive in disastrous conditions with immoral impacts at every turn, or to not survive at all, how can any one of us claim to participate with ethical intentions and outcomes? The climate emergency, after all, has come about because of these capitalist economic forces and the states they create. 
feel that they are entitled to a share of the world's finite resources, dwindling more rapidly than nature can provide. This isn't an act that is irrespective of those impoverished as a result or its hallmark trail of destruction. It's an intentional part of the capitalist system to extract to the point of environmental and societal doom. The sacrifice of people and planet in the pursuit of profit is both the base and the superstructure of consumption under capitalism and its intrinsically unethical nature. Because then we have no choice but to play the game. Then all we can do is consume to survive and watch the earth burn around us until, of course, we choose to rise up. And capitalism offers up consumption to us as this creative solution to capitalism's own crisis of climate disaster. But when capitalism is the root of the problem, us attempting to consume ethically would be like snipping off the leaf. All we're really doing is leaving more room for capitalism to grow. And this, this is how climate action becomes consumption's great arch enemy. The concept of ethical consumption itself challenges the power of the systems in which we live. It's impossible for capitalism to enable ethical consumption or it falls apart. The wealth and the power that the UK yields, the kind that allegedly breeds innovation or magically generates swathes of green entrepreneurs, is a power that manifests itself in repeatedly obstructing international climate policy, not in encouraging ethical choices that mitigate the worst impacts of the climate crisis. Because genuine ethical choices would not be accessible or acceptable in a system where power is built on the backs of those exploited, homes raised to the ground, and then the ground itself extracted and commodified. A system where power is built on taking more than your fair share, a power eternally intent on destroying this planet, a power reliant on the countries with the most historical responsibility for the climate crisis retaining their stolen wealth. The power that true climate action challenges is a power preserved by the lie we tell ourselves when we try to consume ethically. The lie that excessive financial power, capitalist domination, and entrenched inequality was formed through fair and equal systems. And so it is by playing the fair and equal game of ethical consumption that we can somehow magically overturn its chokehold on our futures. But the truth is that your bamboo toothbrush will not save us. What we have in our hands are not the chips of the capitalist game. Instead, it's our own collective empowerment that ties together every ethical concern by recognizing the shared root of our many interlinked crises that will liberate us and save our planet. Consumption is the price we pay on behalf of our Earth, a wealth mercilessly built by the unyielding cruelty of capitalist and colonial resource extraction that has created and sustained every major emergency, every global catastrophe. The system is designed for this, but our morals demand of us that we must do even better, and in doing so accept the unequivocal truth that ethical consumption is a myth. It thrives off of neo-colonialist industrialization in the name of green choices. It paints a capitalist fantasy of exchanging capital without the grave impacts that extractivism inflicts. It brings equity, to safety, and sustainability no closer to our grasp. It is the antithesis of all that climate action and the preservation of our planet necessitates. There can be no ethical consumption under capitalism. Thank you.